Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. In the first part of this video series, we discuss the nuclear component of Iran's new deterrence posture being established by 2025, timed with the incoming US administration. In this second part, we will focus on the other critical component necessary for Iran to establish itself as a latent nuclear power, with an extremely short breakout time and global strike capability. A credible and robust global nuclear strike capability is essential from Iran's perspective, because its primary adversary, the United States, is located on the opposite side of the globe. The counter-value strike capability covered in the first video requires Iran to be able to target key U.S. cities, including the capital, Washington, D.C., and other major population centers like New York. Counter-value nuclear strike against civilian targets stems from the Cold War, where the U.S. and the Soviet Union had it as their last option if their existence was at risk. To credibly hold such counter-value targets at risk, Iran's delivery system must have a range of at least 10,000 kilometers. An intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, capable of reaching speeds of around Mach 20 is the only viable option here, as it provides the necessary defense penetration capability to ensure a high probability of a successful strike. Alternative delivery methods, such as air-launched or submarine-launched cruise missiles, would have significantly lower chances of success. Iran's approach to achieving a 10,000-kilometer range ICBM stems from its development of a solid propellant space launch vehicle, diverging sharply from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's strategy of building larger, liquid and solid propellant ICBMs. Iran focused on miniaturizing its weapon systems instead with the goal to guarantee their survivability in second strike scenarios. Second strike is the capability to have the nuclear forces survive a first strike nuclear attack by the opponent and answer back. During the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union initially pursued the goal to create large, heavy ICBMs designed to carry multiple nuclear warheads and decoys. These large systems, such as the US MX Peacekeeper and the Soviet R-36 ballistic missile, NATO codenamed Satan, featured such high throw weights. However, as the precision of nuclear-armed ICBMs improved, the survivability of these large stationary missiles in their silos during a second strike scenario came into question. If an adversary were to launch a sudden counterforce attack against these missile, targeting the large stationary silos would become feasible for more modern, accurate ICBMs. The silos housing of these giant missiles could not be sufficiently hardened to withstand a very close or even direct nuclear impact. Consequently, both the US and the Soviet Union explored more survivable alternatives. First they developed large, mobile ICBMs like the Soviet Topol, and later advancing to smaller, mobile ICBMs, such as the US Midgetman and the Soviet Courier small intercontinental ballistic missiles. These systems represented the peak of ICBM technology in the late 1980s and early 90s. However, the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union led to the discontinuation of these programs, as threat levels sank. Iran chose to develop its own ICBM capability, inspired by this latest evolution in Cold War missile technology, aiming to achieve a highly survivable system that could withstand a decapitation nuclear strike and guarantee a second strike capability. This approach resembles a scaled-down version of the Mutual Assured Destruction MAD concept, wherein Iran could retaliate against its adversary's counter-value targets if its existence is at risk. Unlike large ICBMs, which have a detectable footprint due to their size, weight, and complexity, a miniaturized ICBM can be disguised as an ordinary civilian truck. When using storable solid propellants, the missile's support infrastructure and the need for accompanying support vehicles are minimized or even completely eliminated. Such a missile, sized to fit into a trailer truck, can be stored in deeply buried, nuclear-hardened mountain tunnels ready to be dispersed after an initial adversary nuclear strike or deployed covertly around the country, camouflaged as ordinary civilian trucks. The survivability of Iran's ICBM design is further enhanced by its low-maintenance design, capable of remaining operational for years without upkeep. Iran specifically pursued this capability, diverging from earlier US and Soviet designs like the Midgetman and Courier, which still utilize liquid, sometimes toxic propellants for thrusters and hydraulics for actuators, 
leading to potential leakage and ongoing maintenance needs. The new Iranian missile was engineered to avoid any reliance on liquid propellants or hydraulic systems altogether. It is believed that the only fluid necessary for the design is compressed air for the roll thrusters of the compact second and third stages. However, the missile's initial public appearance would be as a space launch vehicle, designed to deploy small satellites into Earth orbit, providing a very plausible explanation for its development that could be legitimately presented to the international community. This road mobile space launch vehicle is known as Qayyam 100 and can be used to insert small communication and optical spy satellites into orbit under war conditions, or even be modified into an anti-satellite weapon. The initial development of the original Qim began as a very large solid propellant space launch vehicle, designed by the elite team led by General Hassan Tehrani Mogadam, known as the father of Iran's missile program. Over a decade after the tragic 2011 incident that resulted in the death of Mogadam and parts of his elite development team, Iran introduced a much smaller space launch vehicle in 2022, also named Qayyam. Although this version appeared less imposing than the original Qayyam, it represented a more advanced missile design with higher technological sophistication. Components of the Qayyam 100, such as the Saman second stage, had already been tested in 2020 through the Qasid space launch vehicle. By 2023, the Qayyam successfully placed its first satellite into low Earth orbit. Iran repeated this feat in 2024, demonstrating the reliability of this new space launch system and the mastering of the difficult technology to the world. To develop such a compact space launch vehicle capable of delivering the performance needed for a small intercontinental ballistic missile, Iran had to overcome several significant technological hurdles. The first was producing motor casings made of carbon fiber composite for all three stages of the missile. The second challenge was developing a so-called flex seal nozzle for thrust vectoring control, used in all three stages as well. This solution avoided the more complicated, less efficient, and less reliable alternatives, such as liquid fuel injection into the nozzle. The third key innovation involved electromechanically powered actuators for the flexible nozzle. By using electromechanical actuators powered by thermal batteries, Iran eliminated the need for hydraulic systems, reducing the risk of leakage and enabling the missile to remain ready for prolonged periods without requiring complex maintenance. The Qaim 100's payload capacity for launching satellites into low Earth orbit is approximately 100 kilograms. However, when modified into a 10,000 kilometer range ICBM, this capacity increases to about 300 kilograms. Two critical subsystems are necessary to convert the Qayyam 100 into a functional ICBM. The first is a re-entry vehicle capable of surviving re-entry into the atmosphere at speeds of around Mach 20. The second is a thrust termination system, which ensures the re-entry vehicle reaches the correct trajectory and velocity for accurate delivery to the target. Interestingly, Iran may have already demonstrated the re-entry vehicle technology required for a Qayyam 100-based ICBM through the Rezvan medium-range ballistic missile. While the Rezvan re-enters the atmosphere at Mach 10, about half the speed of what is required for a Qayyam 100 ICBM, there is a critical difference that compensates for this speed disparity. The Qayyam 100 ICBM re-entry vehicle would enter the atmosphere at an angle of attack of approximately 26 degrees while the Rezvan re-enters at about 43 degrees. This steeper angle in the Rezvan's case exposes the vehicle to denser layers of the atmosphere more quickly, resulting in higher peak aerothermal stress during the shorter descent to impact. In contrast, a Chem 100 re-entry vehicle would pass through the atmosphere for a longer time, only encountering denser air layers at a later stage after it has decelerated significantly. While it remains uncertain if the Rezvan's re-entry vehicle can survive intercontinental range re-entry, its basic design can likely be rather easily adapted for ICBM use. The Rezvan's re-entry vehicle, with a mass of 300 kilograms, could not accommodate the so-called Ahmad nuclear device Iran is believed to have developed in the early 2000s, as revealed in the Iran nuclear archive. However, the underlying technology is advanced enough to be improved after two decades for a nuclear device that could fit into a resvan size re-entry vehicle, requiring the nuclear device to be under 500 millimeters in diameter. The high ballistic coefficient of the Rezvan's re-entry vehicle would enhance its ability to evade endo-atmospheric missile defense systems, such as the Patriot Pac-3, due to its high re-entry speed, 
estimated to be Mach 9 at impact when used at intercontinental ranges. The second major technological challenge in weaponizing a space launch vehicle as an ICBM is achieving precise thrust termination. This process is essential to insert the unguided re-entry vehicle onto the correct ballistic trajectory with minimal velocity error, ensuring the vehicle's accuracy during its lengthy, unguided descent towards the target. Iran appears to utilize a method first introduced by the United States in its Trident-1 ballistic missile, known as the General Energy Management System GEMS. This system employs flex-seal thrust vectoring to continuously adjust the missile's trajectory toward the intended target until the solid propellant in the third stage is completely burned out with no thrust left. Only at this point does the missile separate the re-entry vehicle, which is now on a precise ballistic trajectory, and the right speed to strike the target with a good accuracy. While not precise enough for pinpoint accuracy, this level of precision is more than adequate for delivering a nuclear weapon, even in counterforce scenarios targeting specific military sites. In summary, the Qaim 100 with all its features would represent a high-end ICBM if converted from a space launch vehicle to a missile and fulfill all the requirements. In the next video, we will explore potential scenarios for a nuclear breakout once Iran has fully operationalized this new strategic deterrence posture by 2025. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.